Guten Tag, my name is George M. Fly and I welcome you to another episode of my ginormous space station series. In a former episode we brought this grid here which you see in the picture into the orbit. Now the question is what are we going to do with it? Well I came up with this design and as you can see it hardly fits in the vehicle assembly building. So I took it outside and viewed it from a few different angles to get a better view on it. But as you can see, those pictures here are still from version 0.20, when the physics engine was kicking in a little bit later, so I could put it on the launch pad and take a quick look at it, take some snapshots, but then it would fall apart. Now the real fun began. I had to design all those rockets that bring up the monopropellant fuel tanks. This design here consists of a stack of eight monopropellant fuel tanks, which are all equipped with one docking part. They go all on the grid as a ring. After that, I brought out Bill to take a look at the station and have a screenshot done with the first components attached. Well, I think he looks gorgeous in his little suit. Now that the first parts are up, it's time to bring more complex structures up there. So next, stacks of two are needed on the station. The higher the stacks get, the more flights I have to take to get them up there. Here's a list of stacks needed and the flights it took to bring them up there. 8 times stacks of 1 with 1 flight. 20 times stacks of 2 with 5 flights. 24 times stacks of 3 with 8 flights. 12 times stacks of 4 with 6 flights. 4 times stacks of 5 with 2 flights. 8 times stacks of 7 with 4 flights and 4 times stacks of 14 with 4 flights. As you can see there are quite a few flights to be done, but I find it really challenging. And each time you want to bring up a bigger stack, you have to redesign the rocket to be able to cope with a bigger weight or the fluctuation. In the pictures now, you can see I start to add stacks of 3. The grid is starting to fill nicely and you get an impression how it's going to be looking at the end. After being finished with a stack of three, only the corners and one part in the middle on each side is left empty. That's where the more challenging stacks of 4, 5, 7 and 14 go. Now you can see the stacks of 4 coming in. And you can see that the stacks in the design are small in the middle and getting larger to the outside. To allow the maximum movability of incoming flights. After finishing up the stacks of 4, only three ports are left empty in each corner. Now it's time to put in the stacks of 5 on the sides. Up until this point I had 20 launches and 64 docking maneuvers. After the stacks of 5 are finished, it's time to launch the stacks of 7. So let's follow this rocket on its ascent to the space station. As you can see there are lots of RCS thrusters installed, but RCS fuel is certainly not a problem. Since the station is in an equatorial orbit, I pointed the station perfectly north, so incoming ships being pointed south are in a perfect alignment for docking. As another stack of seven rocket skywards, let's take a closer look at the staging. I'm using asparagus style here, and you can see how effective it is to bring this big stack into orbit. As you can see in those shots here, I'm using a lot of those structural pylons. I use them to attach RCS thrusters and as a base for struts. Back in 0.20, ASAS was using a lot of RCS fuel. Now with the improved SAS, much less RCS fuel is required and I think it's much more realistic. In preparation for docking, I first jettison all the struts and after docking, I jettison all the other pylons, leaving me with a cleaner design and a smaller part count. Finally, the stacks of 14 need to go into orbit. And while I look at the rocket and admire the design, I realized that this is the rocket with the most RCS fuel I've ever launched into orbit. Now that the second stack of 14 is delivered, let's follow this rocket to its fiery re-entry into Kerbin atmosphere and enjoy the beautiful views of the Kerbal Space Program. So here comes the second to last stack of 14. The original design contained only a stack of 11, but I wanted to be able to see the stacks from the inside of the capsule. As you can see, that was not necessary, but it adds a very dramatic look to the station. So now only one stack of 14 is missing. So let's follow this rocket to its final ascent to the space station to deliver this final stack. Once this last docking is complete, there have been 30 flights, 76 docking maneuvers, and now there are 300 RCS fuel tanks attached to the top of the space station. 
So when we now add the 376 parts that we just added to the space station to the already existing 819 parts of the grid, we come to a part count of 1185 parts. And with this final result, I say thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm George M. Fly. See you in the future.